yeah, some. Play with body. Play with body, body image. Body horror. Uh, body oh horror. yeah. Yeah. That's an easy one. That don't restrict a game where my character was bulimic. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That and was your hard. mirror, the mirror started talking to you. Yeah. You know you're just gonna throw. That was, yeah. that was that was harsh. That was, that was mean. That was one of the meanest things I ever did to you. <laughs> you know? And you were okay with that yeah. for once. <laughs> you got any? Um, let's get some like just creepy tips. I got I, I got one that that I find works really really well. Again, you have to know your players really well. It's to fucking do something like that. <laughs> you see, it works. <laughs> just suddenly. I need a hug now. <laughs> <laughs> you can totally, if you if you know that you can get away with that, you can totally start to <laughs> by changing the boundaries of what their expectations are. <laughs> 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 okay. yeah, you might want to check in with the panel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But you see, so you see what I mean. If you, if and when you know your players, just by changing. I mean, everybody's used to just kind of sitting around gaming. So if you get up, move around, break the fourth wall, start talking to people, start kind of interacting, working in between, and changing the tone of the voice. Larping? Yeah, feels larping. Like. <laughs> but it's using acting techniques, using psychological techniques. You can really shake things up in a role-playing game scenario, especially in a tabletop, because that's what people are yeah. expecting, that you're sitting in tabletop. I mean, uh, my, my partner and my friend and collaborator, they, we game together all the time, and I get up and move around and do all this kind of stuff like this, and they occasionally do it too. And yeah, it brings a whole other psychological dimension to what you're playing. That was awesome. Yeah. 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 I don't have anything. I'll just pass it to him. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got, I can't top that. Oh, oh, that angel thing was pretty. Oh, no. You asked yeah, me for so. my big guns, I, I'll go. Um, well, I think there are other things you can do. I mean, I totally agree with Phil on this, and I'll be using that uh, breaking the fourth wall maybe more frequently. I, I think there are other things you can do that are maybe more... Yeah, more subtle. More, like what? <laughs> more mechanical, more, you know, this is sort of in-game stuff that, that squicks people out. Uh, some of it, some players have thick, thick skins, right? And they shrug everything off. We heard about some of this. Uh, but the moment you start threatening, I don't know, I hate to call it rules and mechanic elements, sometimes that goes right under their skin. And it's like, yeah, your character's being tortured. Yeah, yeah, all right, can we move on with this? Uh, you yeah, know, whatever. Okay, your character's looted, losing constitution. Your hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> your character just lost two points of comeliness. Right. In and I mean, this is why the, the, the madness mechanic, the sanity mechanic oh, in Cthulhu oh, is so yeah. brilliant, right? Yeah. So People twitch because they know they're never getting that back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like real life you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and, and don't rest your head. There's the same thing. This, he, this, this die, this disciplined die that represents you and all of your clinging to reality is now a madness die forever. Oh God. Yeah. You only have three. When you're done, you're a nightmare. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Scary. So I mean, of course you want to build that up with voice, with acting, with your description, with the encounter, every bit of flavor you can throw at it. But then slip in that rules and mechanical knife and double your input. I love games where the car carpet, carpet matches the drapes, and, and Call of Cthulhu is the first and best. I, <laughs> I, it's really hard to horrify my girls. Um, con people in con scenarios are much easier, mm -hmm. I find, just because you don't know them as well inside and out, and they don't know you. Um, but, huh, yeah, I, don't, I got nothing. I go <laughs> for the face. You change people's appearance. We were just actually mumbling at each other about the uh, the mutations in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, oh my God, I have a tentacle now. I'm a pariah, and no society will never accept me again. And I'm on the slow downward spiral to being the enemy. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that's terrifying. That that freaks me out. But you know, even then, I mean. I, we could be playing a caper game where we're holding up a bank, and I would really like you to give me the the, key, the, uh, the you know keys to the safe, you know, so that I can steal everything that we stole. 
Now I'm going to start cutting your face. Now I'm going to start making you ugly. I'm going to start pulling teeth. That's going to scare the living crap out of somebody. Most people are really creeped out about their body. Drew brought that up. Mm -hmm. Well, pretty good segue from that is always have lasting effects from the violence that you do to the, to the players yeah. and to people around them. I mean, if someone, you know, just like in Dungeons and Dragons, someone gets stabbed, well, I lost, you know, 12 points of hit points. Okay, yeah. now write this scar down on your character sheet. What? Uh, my friend Alex this, and I were yeah, just talking always have about that scar the, there. the 4E game he's going to run, and he's like, well, I've got these little flying spiders, and they have a venomous bite, and if you don't heal with some sort of magic, it leaves a big cratery scar. Mm. You got there. Uh, one of the other things that oftentimes you play, especially at con games and whatnot, it ends up being the players against the game master. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways to split people up that I've seen is to drive wedges between the players. Mm -hmm. Especially oh, yeah. if they're mm -hmm. friends or if they're some you know, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc. Um, put that wedge in there and make them against each other. I love and games that. like that just so much. That's what I want to sit down and do it. The, 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 the questions you asked before that big LARP we did in Amazon. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, you could, that's a great technique. This is, I don't know if this is really adult content or not, but you can sit down with a bunch of people who are about to play a game and you say, so uh, who's the leader of the group? <laughs> who's the yeah. real leader of the group? <laughs> Why do those guys always fight? <laughs> who gets everything done? Are you, is he really the guy who gets anything done? Why do they always pick on you? How come you have to do everything? It's just a great technique. And it doesn't matter what the answers are to me, the GM, because they're the ones who are really thinking about it. And the next thing I know, you're looking at that guy going, oh, and you are looking, you're looking at them going, what a couple of clowns. And you're like, oh, why, why, why? And it really gets you guys into character. On the adult part of that, mm -hmm. it's actually the interview process find people who are going to do a with different things and use those adult things so that the person is okay with it, the person who isn't okay with it, that's the five point. Yeah. I mean, you can take those questions to a much more adult level. So, how long have you been fucking? Why, won't, why don't they tell you about that? And the next thing you know, you're like, wow. You've been watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, how long have you been watching? Um, Without them knowing. Yeah. Can I a t-shirt have questions? Uh, actually, it's going to be a comment. Just, my groups are normally less into the, the um, you know, gory descriptions and everything, and, and I found that sometimes it can be really cool just to kind of bring home what your characters are doing to these other people. There was one game in particular where they were invading this cult, and it was in a labyrinth of a, a dungeon, and they went in and they charged a room, and like three people got criticals and killed six people in a round, and then they just walked out. And they got lost, and they came back, and that I, I described the room to them as, you know, an, a, a room with these bodies lying on the ground and blood spray on the wall. And they're this. like, who are these people? What, why are they doing this? <laughs> 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 